Hey, that's pretty cool, eh? I think so, at least. And that's a good thing, because I wrote a long time on this. Some of you may wonder why this flying popsicle was so difficult to make. Uh, have I put a lot of effort into making a realistic flight simulation? Or have I just been overwhelmed by school lately? The answer is both. I've recently become very interested in something called aerospace engineering. As some of you keen minded out there might have already deduced, it's about engineering stuff for air and space, i.e. planes and rockets. Whereas my last video focused more on the rocket side of things, this one is all about planes. Planes are pretty cool for a number of reasons. Number one, they can fly. Number two, you can't. And number three, they are therefore superior to you in every way imaginable. But how exactly do they fly? Birds, for example, fly by flapping their wings. Why not do that? Well, we tried and it didn't go too well. But birds also do this gliding thing and they kind of fly that way too, so maybe we can try that? Yes, brilliant idea. Success! It works! But... Wait, how exactly does it work? Why doesn't it just fall down? I think it's about time that I, an absolute amateur whose only knowledge comes from watching YouTube videos for like two weeks, educate you on some basic aerodynamics. This is an airfoil, a shape designed specifically to create a lift. When air comes from the left, it splits right here at something called the stagnation point. The air on top accelerates, creating an area of low pressure and the air below slows down, creating an area of high pressure. Pressure differential then sucks the airfoil up and that's what we call lift. There are of course also other forces acting on the airplane. Drag for example, also known as air resistance, acts opposite the airflow. The engines provide thrust forward to counteract the drag, and the weight pulls the airplane down towards the ground. If you're interested in a more in-depth explanation, I'd suggest you check out the playlist called ATPL Training Videos – Principles of Flight. I have a link down in the description. Now that we have some basic understanding of the physics, let's jump right into the implementation. I began by creating the, this airplane using nothing but Unity's standard cubes. It's amazing what beauty can be created using only such simple tools. I then created a script, added it to the plane and jumped right into Visual Studio. I began by modeling the lift, since it's both the most complex and the most fun for us. Calculating a realistic airflow using individual particles would take Unity down to around one frame per day. So, I had to figure out a way to cheat physics. But how? Well, let me introduce you to lift curves. Lift curves are a way to display the connection between the lift coefficient and angle of attack of an airfoil. The lift coefficient is used right here in the equation for lift, and the angle of attack, AOA for short, is the angle between the airfoil's forward direction and the airflow's direction. If I create a lift curve using the animation curve in Unity, I can use the evaluate function to get the lift coefficient. This doesn't yield 100% accurate results, but it's realistic enough for me. The direction of lift is perpendicular to the airflow, so I use the cross braid like this to get the correct vector. I had some temporary roll, pitch and yaw controls, and just like that I had a semi-functional airplane. Shout out to Y485 on Twitter for his amazing guitar repo on airplane simulation in Unity. It was there that I found out about lift curves, so check it out if you're interested. I have a link to some really helpful text from the repo in the description down below. 
After flying around for a bit, I headed back into Visual Studio and implemented the drag. Just as I used a lift curve to calculate the lift, I used a drag curve to calculate the drag. The curves themselves look a bit different, but they read basically the same way. The direction of the drag is just opposite the airflow, so I didn't need to do any fancy cross product stuff this time. Cool, drag works now. What's next? Uh, suffering. A whole lot of suffering. I took a deep breath as I leaped into the control surface purgatory. One might mistakenly think that control surfaces would be quite easy to implement. Aren't they just smaller wings after all? Well, yes, but actually, no. You see, the control surfaces employ a strict no bullshit policy, where even a slight deviation from reality makes the plane uncontrollable. Thus, I was left with no choice but to study the art of the plane thoroughly. I investigated detailed statistics, examined complex maneuvers, and calculated the geometry of fighter jets. After completing my studies, I was able to determine that my first step towards creating realistic control surfaces would be to make a cool 3D model of a jet engine. And ta-da! Here it is! Awesome, isn't it? It even has these cool flames being at the back. But wait, I still don't have any functioning control surfaces? What should I do now? I know, cooler wings. Boom. <laughs> Done. Now let's go to red for some extra speed and... Damn it. It's still not working? Well, I guess I'll have to do something productive instead. And so I did. I added ailerons to the wings which controlled the roll, horizontal stabilizers to the tail to control the pitch, along with a rudder to control the yaw. I reworked my entire code structure and physics calculation to account for moving surfaces, and after many days of work I arrived at this. It's a bit wobbly, but that's mainly because I haven't implemented any stability assist yet. The airplane is designed in a way that makes it inherently stable, but some software stuff is still needed for the finer movements. But there is still one major quirk with my airplanes. They do this? When I pitch up and roll at the same time, I roll much faster and sometimes it just jerks 180 degrees. At first I was sure it was a bug, but after investigating the issue further, I began to speculate that it might be perfectly natural. As the airplane rolls, the wings have different angles of attack relative to the airflow. This results in a different amount of lift, and when the difference is too drastic, the airplane does this sudden flip. This is very similar to something called a snap roll. A snap roll is basically when an aircraft pitches up slightly and uses the lift generated to perform a really fast roll. I am far from 100% certain though, so feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure some of you guys know way more about this than I do, and I'd be incredibly thankful for some help. Unfortunately, this airplane isn't rideable in the same way as the rocket yet. I focused more on the physics thus far, but expect some sick airplane parkour in the future. As for now, this is what I have. I think it's pretty neat, and hopefully you think so too. Anyway. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to caress that like button and gently, very gently, move over to the subscribe button, or to press down softly. And that's all for tonight. Au revoir, mon chéri. Ja, <laughs> oh, fein, ja, ja.